Hey everybody, welcome to Vacuum Wars and welcome to our complete guide for the Roborock S5 series. I have here the S50, the white one, but this tutorial will also work for the black one or the rose gold one. We're going to start off with a quick start guide, show you how to get up and running really quick, download the app, all that kind of stuff. Secondly, I'm going to go through all the buttons and all the features on the app, basically a quick tutorial on how everything works. Links in the description to everything I'll mention, and let's get started. All right, so step one, even before we get to the app, is setting up the charger, and you really need to pay attention to this step because if you do this wrong, you can end up having a really bad bad user experience in general because if it's set up wrong the robot will have trouble returning to the dock it can be knocking this around all kinds of bad stuff can happen so what you want to do is find a nice flat surface preferably a hard floor and set it up against a wall as flush as it can be against that wall the next thing you need to be aware of is there needs to be space on either side and in the front uh, Roborock recommends a half meter about a about one and a half feet on either side and on the front it recommends one and a half meters. That's about five feet or so. So a lot of space out front and some space to the side on a flat surface up against a wall. Before we leave the charger, I'll also talk about this uh, mop protection pad charger attachment. Basically it attaches to the charger by just setting it flat and pushing it in. You can see it kind of holds on itself. What I found is that these mopping pads really don't seep water too much when they're standing still. In fact, they're designed not to be seeping water when they're standing still. So this isn't absolutely necessary, but it is a nice touch, especially if you're going to be using the mopping feature quite a lot. All right, so to download the app, in my case, I'm going to the Google Play Store, but you can go to the iTunes Store or whatever and search for the words Me, M, I, Home. Uh, this is because Xiaomi, uh, is the owner of Roborock and here it is me home so once it's downloaded you open up and you'll see this screen and we are going to add a device so we just hit that button there all right so as we're trying to add a device there can be a lot of things that can go wrong at this point so I'm just going to mention some of the things you might need to know right here we see a Wi-Fi uh, light underneath the lid it's blinking blue if you need to reset the Wi-Fi if you're having trouble at this stage you can do so by holding down the uh, the charge button and the spot clean button at the same time for I think three seconds you'll hear a tone and it'll take a little bit of time but this will reset and then you can try this uh, process again alright so now we're going to try to add our device um, we have reset the Wi-Fi and now we are going to choose that vacuum. This is where you're going to set up your router and you might need to enter in the, uh, uh, you know, which router you're using and the password for that router. In this case, I've already set up our router. Uh, so I'm just going to click that one and hit next. And this process might take a little bit. All right, so it's just go going to ask basics here. You're going to name your uh, robot vacuum, et cetera, et cetera. Just some very basic stuff, nothing very important. So we're just going to hit use now and that takes us to the main home screen to start using your vacuum. All right, so let's talk about the robot itself. We're gonna talk about some of the buttons, some of the hardware, how it works, and then we're going to move on to the app features. Starting off with the buttons, the center button here can be long pressed to turn the robot vacuum on or off. So you hold it down, it turns it on and off. These other two buttons, this one over here is the spot clean button. This is for if you made an isolated mess, so somebody spilled a, a potted plant or something like that. You could set this right in the center of it, hit the spot clean, and it will clean in a pattern around the area that you set it in. Uh, this button to the right is the uh, charging uh, button, so no matter what the robot vacuum is doing, you can hit this button and it will return to the charger. All three of these buttons are also available in the app. We'll quickly talk about the dustbin. Uh, so to access the dustbin, you just lift up this tab right here. We're going to grab this with two fingers and pull it out. That's how you remove the dustbin. And to empty it, uh, you can see there's two orange arrows there. And we are just going to grab that and pull. There is no latch or anything to open or close it. It's just a matter of force. And it's really not that much force. We'll talk more about this when we get to the maintenance section, but that's all we need to know for now. All right, so really the only main hardware piece that comes with your Roborock is going to be the mopping attachment. So you fill this with water. You can see on one side here, we see this little, uh, the water icon there. It's kind of tricky to figure out which, which one of these sides you pull up, 
but once you pull one corner up you can see that it doesn't have any kind of connection to it. So you just pull one of these corners up. I've actually found that filling this with water is kind of tricky. You need to make sure the water stream is just barely uh, trickling in there to fill this up. Um, but once you do get it filled up, close that up and you turn your robot vacuum upside down like this and it's pretty self-explanatory. You just lock it into place. You can see that's locked in. There are two little buttons on either side to remove this. Okay, looking at your home screen, a few things to note. Uh, you'll see here towards the bottom, you have your battery life remaining. I've got 62% remaining. Some other stats. On the bottom, you'll see a few different options. Uh, go, well, we'll talk about go in a minute. The main thing you need to know here is your uh, clean button. This is to start and pause cleanings. Uh, the dock button, this is the same as the uh, charging button on the robot itself. So if you hit that, it will send it back to the charger. The go button is a little weird. I'm not exactly sure why you would need this, especially since you have the zone cleanup, which we'll look at in a minute. But basically it is so you can set up a point on your map for the robot to go and to start cleaning. So again, you have to imagine with me that I have a much bigger map uh, that I had time to get one going here. But I would just choose a point on the map in order for it to go. And then I would hit this button that says go there and it will start cleaning from that point. The reason why that's not really all that much better than zone cleanup is, I suppose, because with zone cleanup it does something pretty similar. You go to zone cleanup and it gives you a box that you can manipulate. You can make it bigger or smaller. So let's say you had a dining room table that was right over here that you wanted the robot vacuum to clean up. You would just uh, do that and then hit cleanup and you can add, I think, uh, one, you can add one or two more of these clean zones uh, for this kind of thing. And then you can hit this button right here one time, two times. Uh, but really the cool features are up here in the uh, no-go lines and it's got this uh, icon and it says edit right there. So we'll go into that. So with the virtual barrier or no-go feature on this, I really love this feature. Basically you just choose whether you want to use lines or boxes and uh, you just draw them and basically just start creating the entire map of your entire house of where you don't want the robot vacuum to go. And once it's set up, it will just automatically default to uh, avoiding those areas. All right, so let's jump into the advanced features of the app. I'm looking for this top right button, the little three dots there, which is your settings menu. And I'll just go through these one by one, starting with vacuum settings. The first one there is map saving mode, and I have this enabled. Basically what that does is it enables the map to be saved, and you can then start to edit it, add the no-go lines, and all those cool features come about because you're able to uh, save the map. So you want to have that checked if you want to use those features. Robots time zone is obvious. Volume setting refers to uh, the robot's voice. So. So not, uh, not actually Starting. how loud the robot is when it vacuums, but rather the uh, alert voice. The next feature is carpet mode. This will boost the power when it senses that it's on carpet. So if you have this in standard or quiet mode, basically low power uh, for the rest of the house, but when it senses carpet, it will automatically boost that to the max power for a better deep clean on the carpet. Finally, on the vacuum settings tab, we have the do not disturb mode. And basically, this is where you can set a, a time up uh, where it basically won't do anything. It won't clean, and it won't uh, give you notifications or anything like that. Next up in the settings tab is timer. And if you're looking for your scheduling tab, that is actually it. So when you see timer in a Roborock app, it means scheduling. So I have two set up here already. I can add another by this, this plus sign on the bottom. I'm going to hit that, and I'm going to start another uh, schedule. So I want this to start, that first tab, rather, uh, you'll see down here at the bottom, it's in military time, so you just choose at what time you want it to start. Uh, the next tab there, you know, I have it on repeat, and it will ask you, do you want this to happen every day, weekdays, weekends, or a custom? You can have a custom time where you choose which days you want it to clean, starting at that time. If you want to set up another schedule starting at a different time, repeating on different days, you can, of course, do that too. You can also set up uh, whether you want it to clean in max mode during that time or quiet mode or balanced. 
any of the four power settings. The third one down here, cleanup mode, is a reference to the power. So it's going to have more or less suction or airflow depending on which one of these you choose. I have actually found that with the Roborock S5, it's really good in its lower power modes. In fact, there's hardly any reason to go on max power except if you want a better deep cleaned carpet. The next tab is general settings and this is where I told you you want to go to check for your firmware updates as soon as you download the app. If you haven't done that already, I recommend doing that. The next tab is clean history. This is kind of interesting. You can see all the times that you've cleaned, uh, the duration of that cleaning, and you can see the map, and not only can you see it, you can zoom in on it. So it's pretty cool. It keeps a record of everywhere it cleaned and what it did. A few other cool ones on here is the remote controls. And you can actually choose between these kinds of buttons or a joystick button, and you can use this just like it was a remote control car. So you can hear it starting up over there. And then finally, the Find My Robot Vacuum, you hit that. Hi, I'm over here. And it says, hi, I'm over here. So in this section, we're going to talk about maintenance, keeping your robot vacuum clean. And it is so much more important to keep these maintained than it is with a regular vacuum because your robot will break down earlier than it's supposed to if you don't keep this clean. And that's because a lot of parts uh, can get hair wrapped around them, they can burn up motors, all that to say it's really important to keep it clean. First thing we're going to do is show you how to clean and replace the filters. The filter is in the back of the dustbin. On one side of this there is actually a little uh, latch that you can kind of get your finger into and pop it out. Um, so yeah, you could uh, clean it like that and Roborock does include a replacement one of these, but you can also take a vacuum cleaner, like if you have another vacuum cleaner, that you can hit this on both sides. It will make this pretty much as good as new. All right, here's all the really important stuff with maintenance, and that's mostly to do with this brush roll. You can see these two arrows showing us to take this cover off like this. You can see there, that goes in like that and locks. Uh, to pull this out, it's actually in one end of this, just pulls right out, and then you kind of pull out of the socket there. This one's relatively clean. There's lots of ways to clean this off, but what I'm really concerned about is a few things. Number one, you can see hair, even in this very lightly used uh, robot, starting to build up around these axles. It can be all through here, winding around there. It's also good to take a look in here to see if there's any debris or anything that can be cleaned up. Uh, that make sure this is free of debris. It's always good to hit this with a vacuum if you have one handy. So as we put this one back, uh, let's talk about the cliff sensors. Um, those are there to basically keep the robot vacuum from going off staircases and several things. They sense when there's a drop off. But they can also collect a lot of d dust and debris and then start to affect the vacuum's performance because it thinks it's going off of a cliff. Uh, you can clean that up with a Q-tip if you start to see any debris accumulating on any of those four sensors. Similarly, you can take that Q-tip and clean this uh, LiDAR laser out. Uh, you can see there's a little hole there, and you can spin that around. And you're mainly, you're not wanting to get too deep in there or clean anything, but you want to make sure there's no, nothing stuck in there, that it's free of debris. And you can do that maybe with a flashlight and a Q-tip, just making sure there's nothing obstructing that view. All right, so links in the description to everything I mentioned, any parts, etc. If you have a technical question that I didn't answer, try putting it in the comments and maybe somebody in the community can help you out. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to Vacuum Wars for more info on this vacuum.